In this example, we will look at how to solve circuits containing dependent sources. Consider the circuit shown here. This circuit has one independent voltage source and one dependent source. This dependent source has a plus minus inside the symbol, indicating that this is a dependent voltage source. And the magnitude of this dependent voltage source is in terms of a circuit current. Therefore, this source is a current control voltage source and this is an independent voltage source. Circuits having this configuration are very important in circuit analysis because they often arise in the process of modeling of real world devices such as transistors or modeling real world complex circuits such as amplifiers. So let's see how we can solve this circuit. First, let us solve this circuit using Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Ohm's law only. The procedure of solving the circuits using KCL, KVL and Ohm's law is shown here. The first step is to label the branch currents. In this circuit, some currents are labeled. So we will use those currents. So the current here in this branch is I5 and the current here can be labeled I0 and the current in this part of the circuit suppose if we label it Ix this current is actually 0 amp so there is actually no current flowing in this conductor because there is no return path for it and in this circuit we have two loops this loop is often called the input side and this loop is often called the output side and the coupling between input and output is through the dependent source only. Let's now implement step two which is to mark the voltage polarities across the resistors. So the end where the current enters is marked positive and the end where the current leaves is marked negative. Similarly, this is positive, this is negative. And for this 3 ohm resistor, the polarity is already in marked and this is the output voltage that we are interested in finding. Thus, in this circuit, we have three variables, three unknowns, I phi, I naught and V naught. And we need three circuit equations in order to be able to solve this circuit. Let's implement step three, which is to identify the loops and apply Kirchhoff voltage law to each loop. Since there is no current in this part of the circuit, we have only two loops. So we have a loop A and we have a loop B. Recall that Kirchhoff voltage law states that the algebraic sum of voltages around a closed path is zero and we use a positive sign for voltage drops following passive sign convention. So applying Kirchhoff voltage law to loop A, we can start at the independent voltage source. We can see that we are going from minus to plus. This is a voltage rise. So the first term is minus 10. And then going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. And we use Ohm's law to write the value of the voltage drop. So this is 6 I phi is equal to 0. In this equation, we have one unknown. So we can easily show that I phi is 10 over 6, which is 1.67 amps. Next, let's apply Kirchhoff voltage law to loop B. We can start at the dependent source. Going from minus to plus is a voltage rise. So we get minus 3i phi. Going from plus to minus is a voltage drop. So we get 2i naught. And then going from plus to minus is another voltage drop. And we get 3i naught is equal to 0. Substituting the value of i phi in this equation, we can show that i naught will come out 1 amp. Finally, we need to find this voltage V0 and this voltage V0 is applying Ohm's law plus 3I0. 
So this is equal to 3 volt. Thus we have one way of finding the output voltage. This circuit can also be efficiently solved using voltage and or current division principles. These principles are illustrated here. In a voltage divider, the voltage drop across any series resistor is proportional to the magnitude of the resistor. And in current division, the constant of proportionality is opposite to that of voltage division. So here we can efficiently solve the circuit as follows. Here we can use Ohm's law and we can show that using Ohm's law applied to the 6 Ohm resistor, the current I phi is the voltage divided by resistance and we get the value of I phi. This output voltage, since this current Ix is 0, these two resistors are forming a voltage divider and we can invoke the voltage divider principle to directly write an expression for V0. So here V0 is equal to, V0 is the voltage drop across this resistor. So in the numerator we have the resistor across which we are interested in finding the output voltage. So this is 3. In the denominator we have the equivalent resistance and equivalent resistance of two resistors in series is just the sum of the resistors and then this is multiplied by the magnitude of this voltage source which is 3i phi and this gives us the desired expression for the output voltage. This can be simplified as 9 over phi i phi and substituting the value of i phi which is 10 over 6, this directly gives 3 volts just as before. So this reconfirms the solution.